The ESPN cameras are focused on the Lubbock Municipal Coliseum, where ESPN presents the 1982 Summer Nationals BMX Bicycle Race. Patterson, he's right in the center. He's got a good starting position, and he is pro undoubtedly the strongest rider in the class. And the man with the stars in his sleeve, Charlie Williams, is out in front, but now the, the rider with Eddie King in the black and silver. So it's Eddie King and Charlie Williams battling for the lead as they go to the first berm. It is still King and Patterson, King and Williams. Right now it is Eddie King on the inside. Eddie King on the inside, but now our winner is in the blue. Andy Patterson in the red, white, and blue, starting in lane four from Bell Gardens, California. Andy Patterson, the winner in the 15 and over division. Fifteen and over expert means that these competitors are going for no money. They are in the uh, amateur division. There were 15, 16, and 17 year olds. Now I noticed at one point we did have a spill, and that was in the berms or the turns. Let's take another look at it. Yeah, what happened is Longkarovich came up on Charlie Williams and essentially just pushed him right out of the turn. That gave uh, Patterson a chance to go on the inside and, and try to make his move through those whoops. You can see uh, Patterson got by him on the outside and went on to win the race. It was right there on that last turn that Patterson yeah, really as made I, his as move. I said, Patterson... <laughs> okay, our on-the-field uh, reporter, Brian Barlow, is standing by with our winner in the 15 and over division. Take it away, Brian. All right, we were out with Andy Patterson, winner of the 15 and over open class. Andy, what did you think about the race from the start to the finish? Well, I drew a good gate position, got a good start. In the first turn, I slid out a little bit, but we're gaining back to the construct. All right, Andy Patterson, you winner of the 15 and over open class, telling you how it is. Back to you, the end. Thank you. We will have more competition, more cruisers, more professionals here. And we are ready now for the 15 to 25 cruiser division. These are experts. These are people who ride for a long time, know what they're doing. And Dean, why are they in the cruiser division as opposed to the 20-inch wheelbase? What's the difference? Well, I'll tell you, the 15 to 25 uh, cruiser class are very big, strong riders. And usually they're not real comfortable on 20-inch bikes, although there is uh, quite a few guys out there that do ride the 20-inchers. They feel considerably uh, more comfortable on 24-inch. Uh, so we may see some names twice. And speaking of names, let's set our lane assignment. Robert Fade of Long Beach, or sorry, South Beach, California in lane one, blue helmet, primarily dressed in yellow. In lane two, David Erickson of Freeport, Louisiana, primarily in red. In lane three is Tim Judge, a name to watch out for. He is from Miami, Florida. A lot of stars on his uniform. In lane four, this is Robert Duran. He is from Washington. Leone, Dee Dee Leone. In lane five is Damon Johnson. From Seal Beach, California, Robert. He is from Dee. Federal Way, Washington. From Federal Way, and in lane six, Damon Joe Johnson. Claveau. And from Miami, Florida, Moving to the outside of our competition, Claveau is from Riverside. In lane seven is Dee Dee Leone from Shreveport, Louisiana. And in lane eight on the outside is Roger Lowe from Jasper, Tennessee. Well, Leandra, my money has got to go on Robert Fade. He's got that inside starting position, and he is a real big boy. He's six foot tall, 195 pounds. He's extremely strong. He's jumped off to a good start. Again, he has that inside slot, so he essentially has the best position through that first corner. Oh, and Tim Judge. But take a look at Judge coming up on the inside with the stars on his sleeves. He just made a great move on the inside, taking the first firm with his foot down on the ground. How he handles the moguls will be interesting. He handled them with no problem. We do have one biker out. But Tim Judge has it by easily three bicycle lengths. Tim Judge, our winner. Yeah, Robert uh, went into the first corner a little bit low, and he ended up drifting out just enough to let Tim sneak behind the inside. And even though Robert's real strong, he just couldn't seem to catch Tim. Tim's a real smooth rider, and it's doing real well on the track today. Yeah, here you go. You can see Tim squeezed off just a little bit on that start. Robert's pulling away real strong, and he runs into a little problem, a little contact with that other rider, and Tim just has enough time to sneak by, accelerate out of that first corner, and he's gone. He really cut that corner tight coming in on the inside there, and then just ran away from it there. Yeah, and all he's got to do right here is just stay up, and uh, he shouldn't run into any more problems than he does. He handles it real well, and uh, Fade just can't catch him. 
I noticed Tim Judge drags his feet there. Maybe Brian could uh, elaborate as to why he drags his feet on his turn. Brian? All right, now here is our finishing area with Timmy Judge, Factory Hutch. He just won the 15 and over open cruiser class. What did you think about when you were coming out of the gate and around the whole track, Timmy? Well, uh, this track's a little bumpy, so when you come out, you just got to think, if you want to get a good spot, work your way around. Okay, I seen you were gaining on the second player, the leader, when you were coming down the second straightaway. Did you have anything in the back of your mind what to do in the next part of the track? Well, what I was doing is when I hit that first turn, I basically just squared it off. Went a little wide and then cut down low. All right, there you have it from Timmy Judge, the winner of the 15 and over cruiser class. Our next division is the probably best division overall. We have the best of the best here. These are the pro cruisers, the names familiar to all in BMX competition. In lane one is Denny Davidson. David Doe, I'm sorry, I just say familiar name. Denny David Doe, Santa Ana, California. He's got the inside lane, not necessarily an advantage on this track. In lane two is Clint Miller of San Dimas, California. In lane three is Joe Stam of Fairfield, California. In lane four is Jim Pratt. Jim Pratt is of Riverside, California. And earlier, we had a chance to speak with him, and he told us of his aspirations in bicycle motocross. Yeah, I'm on a month's tour here racing. Um, it's my 20-inch bike and my cruiser, and I mainly jump cars with a 20-inch bike. I, I hold the world record right now for jumping six cars, and in the near future, I hope to do seven and then maybe eight. Uh, I don't really recommend just any kids going out and trying this because it's, it's, it is kind of dangerous and it does take a lot of practice and experience. I've been jumping for probably the last six years. Moving on with our lane assignments, in lane five is Clarence Perry of Tacoma, Washington, and in lane six is David Christensen of Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. Six competitors in the pro cruiser division. Here we go. Rider one tonight. The power rider, Clarence Perry, trying to get to a lead, makes it on the first jump. Clarence Perry, all muscle, a big, strong fella, and he's getting some pressure on the outside. It is a battle. Clarence Perry, again, moving on the jump, seems to make his best moves there, cuts his corner short, but goes wide on the berm. Mogul seems to present no problem for him. He's out in front, doesn't have the pack to contend with. Clarence Perry powered his way out of the start and right through to the finish, a fine race by Perry in the Pro Cruiser Division. Perry is just incredibly strong. As you saw in the start, he just, he just pulled away, and uh, there was some real good racing through there. I mean, we, uh... Okay, let's take another look at the start. Okay, as you can see, Clarence Perry, that number six position, starting to pull. He just pulls right over, cuts everybody off, and there's, uh, that's fair, all fair in racing. And uh, he starts to tangle here a bit with David Al, and David Al is on that inside line, but uh, Clarence takes a nice clean line through there and uh, does real well. On the outside is uh, Dave Christensen, and he makes a real strong bid for that uh, second position. He's uh, been constantly pressuring with Clarence, again, our winner, a real strong competitor. Turn seemed to be the place where people gain or lose ground. Earlier in the competition, we saw quite a few youngsters go into the berms. Maybe you can analyze some of the strategies that we've seen. Dean? Well, I'll tell you, Leander, what's happening is, uh, now that we've gotten into the mains, the track has taken a lot of abuse, and those straights are real bumpy, so we're not seeing too many riders pull down those straights. So uh, the corners are where it's happening to pass. Okay, Brian analyzed the berms on this particular track for us, and he told us that there are some spots that are better than others to compete in. Brian? All right, what I'm standing on right now, this is the bank turn known as a berm. The berm is a very important part of a bicycle motocross event. It's the corner that you're going to have to take to keep up your speed for the entire track. What you're going to be seeing now is a rider coming up. He's going to be taking the fastest line. That's what you want to take if you're in the lead, going around the top of the turn. We have one rider going down on the inside to get in front of the other rider that is on the top. And that is because he is injured, unable to compete for several weeks. His name is Mike Polson, and he told us of his intentions once he gets back into form. Okay, I won't be racing today because I had a bad accident. I was on a motorcycle. I crashed and broke my leg. Um, I suggest that everybody stays away from motorcycles because when I get my cast off, I ain't going to be riding no more. When I get this baby off, I'm going to go for I'm going to be the world champion this year, and I'm going to be 
at Utah number one. And we are ready for that very important event, 16-year-old division, expert category, the best in this age group, all of these bicycles, of course, 20-inch wheelbase. In lane one is Pete Lonkarovich, Santa Ana, California. In lane two is Pat McCool from Richardson, Texas. This is a mighty 16 in lane three is Paul Gossero in all Darren white. Has to be one of the favorites. He's from St. Louis, from Missouri. Missouri. In lane four is Gary from Ellis. Tacoma, He's from Washington. Tacoma, Washington. In lane five is Tim Roden, another favorite, Chandler, Arizona. All the way from St. Louis, Missouri. Paul In lane six Crossroad. is John Carmona from, from El Paso, Chandler, Texas. Arizona, Tim Roden. In lane seven, with the stars on his sleeves, Charlie Williams of North Hollywood, California. And in lane eight, on the outside, in red, white, and blue, is Darren Perry. A fine field of competition in this event. Set him up, Ready. Here we go, one the light, Here they come. And they are out of the block, and it looks to me like our leader right now is Charlie Williams. Charlie Williams out in front. He is the man with the, with the lead right now. Stars on his sleeves. Charlie Williams starting in lane seven, but right now way out in front in close pursuit is Darren Perry, I believe, but it is Charlie Williams who has it all the way, took it from start to finish, rope to rope, a fine race by Charlie Williams and the 16-year-old expert division never got into trouble. That was an excellent race. I'll tell you what, I think uh, if we had uh, gotten a stopwatch on that, that might have been the fastest event so far. You can check the start here. They're mixing it up real well. There's some body contact, and you see Charlie Williams just pulling away. Paul Gossera drops into second. Then we have Pete Lonkarovich on the inside. Now watch Peter. Makes a nice move there on the inside. Starts pulling down the straight, and he's trying to catch Williams. Over the jump, uh, yeah, seems to a couple riders tangled. Okay, now watch into this corner. Watch them accelerate out of here. Long coverage is going to have some problems going over these bumps. Watch him. He tries to jump them, runs into some problems. His feet comes off the pedal. What happens is he actually bent his seat post when he came down on the seat so hard. Watch Gossera on the outside. Gossera, a very, very strong rider, goes along the outside, and eventually it looked like a photo finished. I can't call it. I don't know exactly who plays second or third. But the man who plays first is Charlie Williams, led from start to finish. We'll be back with professional bicycle riders from the Summer Nationals here in Lubbock, Texas, so don't touch that dial. Second prize, 240, third, 160, $80, all told. $800 in the purse. In lane one is Jeff Whitrose from South Lyon, Michigan. Yeah, Jeff's a new pro, and uh, he's rather inexperienced, but uh, he, could have, he has a good gate position. In lane two, Mike Miranda, Hollywood, California. Very flamboyant rider, watch him. In lane three, Bob Madrano. Overdue for a win, I think uh, Bob has a real good chance, great gate position. In lane four, Brad Stewart, Grand Junction, Colorado. Stewart, another uh, inexperienced pro, nonetheless a great rider. In lane five, Fred Hightower from California. Yeah, sponsored by uh, Harbor Light Racing. Uh, Fred's doing real well this year, watch. In lane six, Brian Barlow, our expert commentator. No comment. <laughs> I think his, uh, his expertise in the field speaks for itself. Lane 7, Joe Guerra. Uh, yeah, Joe is doing really well this year, and he's got a great sponsor, SC Racing. And in lane 8, Matt Sullivan from Dallas. Oh, he's sponsored by a local bike shop. Uh, he's got a real bad gate position. Doesn't look real good for him. All right, let's listen to the start. Okay, look at this start. We got Miranda right there in first. He's doing real well. He's got a good jump over the first, first jump. Got some riders down in the first corner. Okay, Garris. Miranda is still out in front. We have four bicyclists down in the first corner, but Miranda's just running away from the pack. Some of them have gotten back up, but two of them are still down. Miranda coasting easily to a victory. Brian Barlow, our expert, is still down in turn number one, but Mike Miranda is our winner. Brian Barlow is okay, as is the other cyclist who's down in the corner. No serious injuries, just an unfortunate finish in this A Pro Money. Winning $320, however, is Mike Miranda. Let's see if we could take another look at this race and see what happened in that first burn. Okay, here we go. The gate drops. 
It's a good even start. Some uh, good clean racing. Over the first jump, Miranda does have a have a slight lead. We got some riders getting a little bit squirrely there, running into some problems. They drift out to the soft stuff. That was Madrano. He's out of the contention. Miranda takes the jump, picture perfect. And uh, Joe Guerra on SC tries to pull him down that straightaway, but Miranda does have a real good. Unfortunately, uh, Barlow uh, had a little bit of a problem in that first corner. I think he, he's better off holding that microphone instead of a handlebar today. Oh, the Double A Pro Division. Brian Barlow is dropping his handlebars and picking up his microphone again. And while he is doing that, let us set the stage. In this, the big money maker, first prize worth 500, second 250, third 150, fourth 100 dollars. A familiar face, Clarence Perry, lane one. Just one on the uh, Pro Cruiser class to see how he does on that 20 inch. In lane two, Harry Leary. Uh, Harry's been in a slump. He's got a good gate position. In lane three, Joe Stam. Uh, Stam is a very stylish rider, although he lacks a little bit of experience in the program. There is no entry in lane four. Moving down to lane five, Greg Grubbs. Yeah, Greg has just been signed to Redline. He's very excited about this new sponsorship, and uh, I think he'll do real well today. In lane six, Stuart Thompson. What can I say about Stuart? He's a world champion. He is the man. In lane seven, Clint Miller. Uh, Clint's real upset about drawing that number seven starting position. Maybe he's mad enough to go out and win it. Another Darth Vader outfit there. You bet. And in lane eight, Greg Hill. Greg Hill, I got a feeling he's going to pull the whole shot out of that number eight position. He's a very intense racer, and let's watch the start. Unbelievable. Uh, Grubbs, uh, again, is really excited about that new sponsorship, and he's gone out and done a, done a great job for that new sponsor, Redline. Okay, let's watch this start. Very intense on the starting gate. They all get a real good pull out of the gate, and you can see uh, Stewart gets cut off, and he just he just can't get that good position. And again, Greg comes from that outside uh, starting gate, so he, he's not in real good shape to uh, pull that whole shot. So Grubbs is gone. Hill's pulling real strong down that second straight. And uh, Stewart falls right in behind Greg. So we got one, two, three. As they go through the whoop de doos, Stewart pours it on a little bit, and he's starting to uh, tries to squeak by Hill on that inside. But uh, there's just just not enough room, and he starts to slide right there, loses traction. That enables Hill to go on the outside, push him a little bit, and uh, Hill comes in for a real strong finish in that second spot. Let's let's get Greg Grubbs' thoughts on the competition and go down to Brian Barlow. All right, here we are with Greg Grubbs, the double-A pro money winner, the newest member of Factory Redline. Greg, you got it out of the gate. What were your feelings when you were coming down the first straightaway? I just, I saw Hill right to my right, and I go, if I could just get him over the jump, I can do it. And then, like he slipped his pedal or something on the first jump, I could just tell. I just go, yeah, I got it, all right. Okay, I noticed you were jamming a little bit. You come up to the ant hills, you almost looped it. When you're almost ready to flip over, what were you thinking right, right on your tail? Don't wreck. <laughs> just, just get through these and hit that last corner and you got it made. I just, God, it was great. <laughs> All right, you hear it from the mouth of Greg Grubbs, factory Redline AA Pro money winner here at the Lubbock, Texas National. Back up to top to Leandra and Dean. A fine performance by Greg Grubbs, $500. Maybe he'll take us out to dinner. We'll wrap up all this action here from Lubbock, Texas, so don't go away from this Coliseum. That double-A pro competition concludes our coverage here in Lubbock, Texas. But before we say so long to you, I want to get some final thoughts from our expert analyst. First, Brian Barlow. We had a chance not only to see you interviewing the winners, but we got a chance to see you compete, but not for long. What happened? I thought I had a good start, and I went over the second jump. Hand slipped out the handlebar and did a classic endo. End over end on the handlebars and landed on my face. That's all I can say. Well, you landed on your feet with the microphone. I enjoyed working with you, Brian. I'm looking forward to working with you again. Now let's swing over here to Dean Bradley. Dean, uh, we had some interesting results here today. Your thoughts on the competition? 
Oh, uh, well, what can I say? You win some, you lose some. Not all my picks were uh, winners, but I'll tell you what. I think every kid that uh, came here today and did some racing is going to leave a winner. And uh, I'm really excited that ESPN is going to be covering uh, quite a few more BMX events. And uh, I think you've seen today how exciting BMX is.